So the broad uh, brush strokes of it is it sounds very similar to the work with borderline personality disorder. And um, it, there's, there's a couple questions that come to mind. What percentage of the patients are male that you're working with? And when you think about that in terms of this initial phase of getting past the barriers that are put up to vulnerability, um, what ways do you see that is similar and different from what we'd be familiar with in, in working with borderline personality disorder? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, all of the patients in our research study are male, 100% mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. Now, there are also female forensic patients who are being treated with schema therapy in some of these same institutions. Mm -hmm. um, so I can talk about that. But one of the main differences is you know, that as, as men, we're socialized to try to be tough guys. Mm -hmm. And so in addition to breaking through the detachment of these patients, you're also dealing with the side of it that you could just call macho, that mm -hmm. uh, these are men, many of whom have gotten the message explicitly as well as implicitly, mm -hmm. you know, that um, it's not okay to show feelings. Mm -hmm. And then furthermore, they often have grown up in really very violent circumstances. Many of these patients, you know, have been severely abused or grown up in um, neighborhoods or environments where there are criminal networks, um, a lot of drug use, drug sales, where or, or then also from a young age ended up in institutions where uh, it may actually make you a victim or mark you as a victim if you show vulnerability. And so they've learned to kind of uh, play a tough guy role. Uh, and underneath that, as I mentioned before, is a tremendous amount of mistrust. Uh, if there's really one schema that characterizes these patients, it's the mistrust abuse schema. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you have to go and deal with the, all of these sort of societal messages about um, showing vulnerability, as well as the fact that they've kind of learned that uh, it's not safe to do that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So there's extra layers to it and then more work in terms of uh, getting into a more vulnerable place with these patients. Yes, and then, correct. Yeah. Um, with the research you've been doing, can you say a little bit about the outcome and and what you're finding as it relates to how uh, how fully these kinds of things can resolve and to what extent they they can develop a moral capacity and connect and and, and yeah. evolve into healthy relationships. Yeah. Sure, I can tell you something. I don't want to too much, um, you know, uh, give away the punchline of my right. uh, presentation yeah. for those who are going to be going. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we've been doing this large-scale um, randomized clinical trial here in the Netherlands since mm -hmm. 2007. Mm -hmm. And that's with eight uh, forensic hospitals. And we have now currently uh, more than 100 patients enrolled in the study. Mm -hmm. And we had started back in 2007 with three of these forensic hospitals, the Roy uh, the Van der Hoeven Clinic, and the Oostvaarders Clinic. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a three-year study. So patients receive are randomized to either receive three years of schema therapy mm -hmm. or three years of treatment as usual in these settings, mm -hmm. meaning that the patient is randomized either to get schema therapy or to get what they usually get. And so, uh, and I won't go into all of the methodological details, but we're very, very careful about the kind of training that we do with our therapists, making sure that the therapists um, are competent to give the therapy, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, giving on-site supervision at all of the sites on a regular basis and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then we videotape the, the therapy sessions so we can actually uh, check for the integrity of the treatment they're, uh, they're giving and so forth. So we're, we're doing it in a way, you know, that frankly, um, in, the fr in the forensic field in general, hasn't been done before. There, this, is the, this is by far the largest scale and most sophisticated study that's ever been done methodologically anywhere, not just in the Netherlands, anywhere internationally, mm -hmm. to try to see whether these patients are treatable with any form of psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. Now, because uh, a bunch of the patients, an uh, initial group of uh, 30 or so, started in 2007, they've actually completed the three-year treatment part of the study. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be following up all of these patients, not just the 30, but all the patients in the study, for three years after they finish the study. Mm -hmm. Because by that point, many of them have been released from these hospitals. There's kind of a phased release that they go through, mm -hmm. starting with short periods where they go out on leave 
under heavy supervision. And if things go well, eventually for longer periods of time and then without supervision, this is part of their reintegration into the community. That's how it works with these uh, Dutch uh, forensic hospitals. Mm -hmm. So what I can tell you so far is uh, a little bit about what the results look like in our first 30 patients. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I have to warn you that the results that we've had so far, they are not statistically significant, mm -hmm. meaning we are seeing differences in a certain direction, mm -hmm. but they haven't yet reached that point of statistical significance where we can know for sure that it's not a chance finding. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to do it on a larger sample of more than 100 people and follow them up over time. But in any case, what I can tell you is that so far the results are very, very promising. Mm -hmm. uh, that on m the major variables that we've looked at, the schema therapy patients are doing better. Um, and the thing that is most impressive is that schema therapy seems to be bringing their risk level down, that is their risk of future crime, mm -hmm. and, and it seems to be doing it faster, and that that effect seems to be particularly prominent for the more psychopathic patients. In other words, there are ways that are there are instruments that have been developed and validated mm -hmm. that predict someone's risk of committing a future offense, and they're actually reasonably good. They they predict with moderate accuracy mm -hmm. over the medium to long haul whether someone is going to commit a future violent offense. And mm -hmm. we give these instruments every six months for the three years of the treatment mm -hmm. to monitor how people are doing in terms of their risk level. And what you see is that the schema therapy patients, their risk level is coming down faster, and that this is particularly true in the um, more psychopathic patients. Mm -hmm. And particularly true in the first 18 months of the treatment, the first mm -hmm. half of the treatment, first mm -hmm. year and a half. Mm -hmm. What you see is that practically all of these people start at a high level of risk, not surprisingly, mm -hmm. meaning that if they were to walk out on the street, you know, they would have be, at, have a, be at high risk for committing a future crime, particularly a violent crime. And within the first 18 months of the treatment that the schema therapy patients, you know, that the majority of them who are in that highly psychopathic group have been, their risk level has gone down to medium within a year and a half. Mm -hmm. wow. Whereas if you look at the, the, the people with comparable levels of psychopathy who are in the treatment as usual group, their risk level has stayed the same during that time. So schema therapy, at least based on these findings so far, appears to be having a pretty rapid effect mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and with some of the toughest patients. Mm -hmm. And that's also comparable to what you see clinically uh, because I do a lot of the supervision myself um, for the patients at a couple of these hospitals. Mm -hmm. And what you see clinically is that there is a kind of a bit of a softening of these patients that a little bit of the edge seems to be coming off of them. They start to be uh, more trusting. At first, that trust tends to be directed toward their therapist. Oftentimes, they'll say, you know, you're the only one that I can trust. I can't trust anybody else, but I can trust you. Mm -hmm. And then over time, that effect starts to generalize as they start to trust more people. Mm -hmm. And people within the clinic who are working with them, like the people on the wards, uh, the psychiatric nurses on the wards where they reside, also s say that they see this difference. Mm -hmm. um, and so, it's also, what's also quite remarkable is that this also seems to be reflected in the speed with which their leave applications are approved. Um, in the Netherlands, to begin this process of what we call re-socialization, gradual re-entry uh, re, uh, into the community, you have to have the um, application be first supported by the clinic in which the patient uh, resides, and then it has to be approved by the Ministry of Justice. And this all process has to be based upon um, assessment with these standardized risk assessment instruments. So the patient has to show low enough level of risk, and then there's a quite a stringent process of leave approval. Mm -hmm. But what we see is that more of the schema therapy patients are getting approval of leave, first supervised leave and then unsupervised leave, mm -hmm. um, and they're getting it more quickly. Mm -hmm. They're getting leave uh, approved by anywhere from four to six months faster than the patients in the treatment as usual group. And so what this suggests is, and of course it makes sense, if their risk level is going down, mm -hmm. that would explain why they're getting leave faster, mm -hmm. because they're seen as at lower risk. Mm -hmm. um, and this also suggests the possibility that schema therapy may be highly cost effective, mm -hmm. because these treatments are extremely expensive. You're, the patient is in a hospital where per patient the cost is about 160,000 euros per year. 
just for one patient to be in that hospital and receive treatment is 160,000 euros per year. That's a lot of money. Yeah. And as you, as you can imagine, there's a lot of pressure now with the economic crisis and so forth worldwide mm -hmm. to lower the cost of delivering treatment. Well, if you can get these patients out of the hospital faster, mm -hmm. you've mm -hmm. reduced their overall costs. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, we've done some calculations that show that if you can get one of these patients out of the hospital by only two months faster, you can pay for the entire cost of a three-year scheme of therapy for one patient in these settings. Wow. All yeah. you have to do is reduce his length of stay by two months. Mm -hmm. And our data so far suggests that you're reducing it by four to six months. Mm 